Hello and welcome to the show. We are here today on Forza Horizon 5 for some multiplayer racing. Now for this session, we're using C-Class cars. However, they're not allowed to be all-wheel drive and they had to be fitted with a V8 engine. Now this throws up a whole lot of difficulties for building a car because well, the decent V8s are likely to be too powerful to go into a sensible C-Class car, which is how I've ended up with a Mercedes V8 in an old Bentley race car. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be there's a few different schoolers of thought. So you've got like the likes of a Vandura. Uh, I think there's a rear-wheel drive converted Range Rover that are kind of big and kind of heavy um, and have sort of V8 engine options. And I think they're on off-road race tires from what I saw. There's a few muscle cars that are running around on standard tires, but of course they're better cars to begin with. I think I've gone for one of the wackier ideas here. Uh, the Toro Nardo, I'm very worried about that because that's a damn good car. It's using a standard engine, which is perhaps a little bit weak. Um, but I know how strong that is. It'll outhandle me, that's for sure. Uh, we are on vintage race, but we're not on the better of the vintage race tires. We've got the white walls, which aren't awful. Jeez, the Ozobin is terrible in a straight line, but it will be a monster in the corners. It's got like 305 tires. Uh, which are, yeah, beastly tyres. And this, I mean, this first track, I have been kind of mean here. The, the Bola Ocho circuit, this is a tough one. This is a real tough one for these cars because there's a lot of difficult handling machines here. Oh, I think, okay, the good news for me is I think I have got the speed in this uh, for some of the more power-oriented stuff, but here is a little bit dicey. Can we get to the inside of the Rebel? I love the Rebel. Wonderful car. I'm a very, very fast A-Class one. Never tried one in C-Class, though. I'm expecting it to also be good here. Uh, it is on the outside. It's going to be on a slightly funky line through here. I'm going to go for a cutback. I was going to go for a cutback, and I got street furniture. Uh, we've still got, like, even after getting street furniture, I've still got enough power to have a run. I've got 510 horsepower in this car in C-Class. I'm running full aero. I'm on race suspension uh, and everything. I mean, it's a bit of a ridiculous, a bit of a ridiculous one. This. I mean, this first track is not going like, to. I say that this first track is not going to really clue us in. It's a very specialised track. But then we've also got dirt to deal with. I'm going to be absolutely garbage there. But <laughs> you know, what can you do sometimes? I built it with an idea in mind, and hopefully, hopefully it'll be good enough at the tarmac circuits. Um, we will. We will get ourselves slowed down here. Uh, try and make these corners, make it survive. Someone throw a plant pot at me. Uh, the Oldsmobile leads the way. I think it's a Bel Air in second. We've got the Vandura and Range Rover third and fourth. We, we're going to just break sideways coming up the hill. The Rebel is there. Is it close enough to have a look? Possibly. Uh, we'll give it some space. Oh, I was going to try to cut back underneath to the exit. Couldn't quite make that one stick. Once the power is down, we absolutely fly in this. But it takes a while to get that power down to the road. And the Rebel doesn't have that much more grip than me. The Vandura and Land Rover have lost a whole heap of time, actually, this lap around. Uh, they've made a right mess of turn one. We're a little bit stuck behind. So, the big difference between me and the Rebel is the Rebel seems to be better on traction. This is one of the things that is difficult for the Bentley because there is absolutely no tyre width upgrades. So unlike a lot of the classic cars here that have got, the classic muscle cars especially, that have probably got like 285 rear tyres, if not bigger, I don't have that luxury. I'm on whatever skinny 1930s tyres or however old this car is, I'm not actually sure. Um, and they're not very big tyres at all, which means I struggle with traction even in like third gear corners. Uh, for example, the Rebel, I can tell you, is struggling with turning by the fact that that's going for a handbrake through there. <laughs> uh, we are past the Vandura, at least. That's something. We are not catching the uh, leaders, I don't think. And uh, I'm going to guess third is a little bit out there. This is always likely to be a lot great track for me. This is always likely to be a handful for the Bentley. It's whether I can deal with the traction and find a way back past the Rebel for fourth. Uh, Oh, lock the brakes going down the hill. Got to be careful of stuff like that. Really easy to do in this car. Rebels understood a little bit why, but it's just able to get down. I just can't get to full throttle. Or if I do get to full throttle, I'll just spin the wheels. And again, we're going sideways through here. I mean, I've got aero on this car. I've tried everything to tame it, but I just cannot carry the corner speed. 
in this, I don't think. One more lap to go. Our best bet is really a mistake at this stage. I just don't think there's going to be anything else that I can do. I've not got the grip. It's an entertaining drive, this Bentley. I'm not going to lie. It's great fun in its own kind of terrifying way. <laughs> it's, it's not the quickest way around. It just wastes so much time waiting to get on the power, waiting to be able to get to full throttle. When it can, I said, it is very rapid. So there's hope for it at some point. Oh. The, the, I mean, the AMC is not... The, 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 sorry, the Beast is having its own Beast machine. That's the one. You know what I mean. That thing is having problems. It's by no means perfect, but it is just that little bit better than me around here. We're going to have another big slide before we come towards the finish line. And it is around... Oh, there's been all sorts of shenanigans at the end. I don't quite know what's gone on there. Uh, <laughs> we will cross the line. It'll be irrelevant to us. Something went, went on at the front. I don't know whether there was a, a bump on the wall somewhere along the lines. It goes the way of the Bel Air. It was very, very, very close up there. Uh, the Range Rover was fast. Actually, fastest lap of the race. I mean, we, we could match the Rebel for lap time. 57.7 for us. Considering this is a track that we should not work at, particularly, um, it could be worse, actually. I say shouldn't work at. We're going to go off-road at some point. It's going to be worse for me, but still. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the Bel Air will claim victory in race number one. We head off-road for our next race. I, I say off-road... It's not a full dirt circuit here, but the dirt section is going to be difficult. Now, the likes of the Vandura and the Range Rover are going to have a big advantage here. Of course, they're on the right tyres. I think the Bel Air might be on those as well. I'm not sure on the off-road uh, race tyres. You can get them in C-Class. Uh, now, the, the, the flip side of that is on a track with more of a straight than we had at Bolo Ocho, you are likely to have very little power and very little straight line speed. Uh, but <laughs> like here, here the, the, the start, well, it's not quite the start for this straight, but uh, yeah, some of the longer straights here, those cars will be very slow on, but uh, they're going to make up all of their time off-road, of course. We're, we're going to see how it all unfolds. We are terrible off the line. i got no traction launching my car off the line. That is to be expected, really. I can't, you can't win everything. Now, the vintage race tyres are not great off-road, but they're not completely useless. They're not the worst thing to have on uh, on your vehicle to deal with the dirt. But, I mean, you'll see the Range Rover will just cut past everybody. Oh, and the Mustang having some real struggles. The standard tyres aren't terrible on the dirt either. Uh, well, I mean, they're not great because, they're, they're, you know, standard tyres, especially 60s tyres. Um, they're not as bad as, like, Slipped, for example. Not that, again, no one's going to be running that. I don't even think you could. Maybe... I think something with a very bad V8 you could put slicks on in C-Class. Why you ever would, I don't know. I mean, like the Ford Deluxes, you could do it. You would just be god-awfully slow. You'd basically be flat out everywhere around a lap or something like that. Regardless, I don't know why, <laughs> don't know why I'm speculating on that stuff. Oh, Bentley, no. That was a little too much speed going into that corner. We are clear of stuff behind. I just, I just think we're going to struggle to move too far forward here. On the tarmac part, we might not be terrible. Well, actually, even then, the tarmac part of this track is quite twisty. Well, it, you know, it's not all dirt. It's still quite a twisty tarmac part that we've got to drive on, which is less than ideal. Let's see if we can chase down a javelin here. And there's potential that we can do it. I've just got to be so... Careful with the throttle uh, out of these corners. Really, like what I said, once it gets going, it's so it's rapid. It does have the typical classic car aero wall, and I have made it worse by maxing out Forza Aero on it. I wanted all the grip that I could get, uh, so it gets its top speed is officially about 139. But honestly, once we get to 120, it's kind of dead. From about 50 to 120, it's very quick. But that's that's where it excels, and we're not really troubling that around here. Oh, the 
javelin has found the wall. We will make a sneaky pass to the inside and then go very sideways on the way past, because that is the Bentley's... Honestly, it's maybe more of a drift car than it is a race car. It way, really, really, really wants to go sideways. It's doing it again, although so is the javelin, to be fair. And we're up to sixth. So it's not the worst thing in existence. The Range Rover's got to the front. Not surprised by that. I'm surprised the Vandura's struggling. I'm going to guess the Vandura's too cumbersome in the tarmac sections here. Uh, that, that would be my best guess. The Rebel's doing pretty well. I mean, it's a big fight over second place, which, unfortunately, I am just not fast enough to uh, to be competing with the likes of them. We can see them, but yeah. <laughs> don't think this build is quite worth... Like, sometimes you try wacky stuff, and sometimes it works. I've got very good cars out of wacky ideas. I don't think this is one of them, unfortunately. I think... Okay, I'm going to say now, the first two tracks have not been to my strengths. Other circuits the Bentley might come good at. I think there is, I think there are some circuits where it might work. However, <laughs> it's definitely not a car that's going to always be competitive. Uh, it's not the worst thing I've ever built, though. That is good. Uh, it's not good to drive. It doesn't drive how I like my cars too. It's far too tail happy, far too little traction. That all being said, it's fun. Like, it's, it's not how I would want my car to drive, but it is fun. And it's not twitchy. It's not a death trap or anything. It's just slow. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's that about sums it up, really. We have got another lap to go. The Vandura is not really pulling away. It might be a tiny bit per lap. We reel it in all the way through the tarmac section, and then it just vanishes the second it gets to the dirt. Yeah, it could be a lot worse. Like, stat-wise, 510 horsepower in this, you would expect it to actually handle way worse than it does in some ways. It's kind of a shame we can't get bigger tyres on it. Bigger tyres, I think it could genuinely be very fast. Um, I know you wouldn't quite get the PI. I guess bigger tyres and using the Chevy V8 rather than the Mercedes V8, because that's a bit less power to start with. I can't remember. I don't actually know if I put any engine upgrades in this at all, where the 510 was what it started with. Uh, not sure, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> there would be a way for it to be, I think, incredibly fast. Uh, however, that's just not what, that's not what you're given uh, with this. We will head onto the tarmac for the final time with a big flourish, and uh, just screw it, we'll go sideways, why not? It's going to be a race in no man's land for us in the uh, spectacular Bentley. Let's go with that. I did, my brain was trying to figure out the best adjective. Because as I said, yeah, it's not garbage garbage, it's just not very fast. <laughs> we'll go sideways through there. Uh, screw it. The javelin's not close. Uh, so might as well just go very sideways. It's not fast because I've now got all of the wheel spin as we head up towards the line, and there we go. <laughs> we will um, snake and everything our way to the finish line, and there we have it. It's sixth place. We head into our next race at uh, hopefully a bit better <laughs> scenery for us. The Emerald Circuit. Uh, our acceleration should be good here. There's no dirt. That is helpful. Very, very helpful for us. Yeah, it would be nice if we were a bit further up on the grid. Um, but we have to do it. Well, the, the, the Tornado is going to run out of speed by the time we get to turn technically three-ish. But, uh, yeah. Um, and this is a track where you do want some straight line speed. Now, there are some handling corners. There are definitely some handling corners. They're not quite long enough straights, I don't think, for my aero wall to be hit. The, the Rebel is... A concern, definitely, because I think that might be a slight bit... That's basically gone a similar route to me, right? But I think that one there is a little bit better overall. Um, I can, I am, I think, a little faster in the acceleration front from that sort of 50 to 120, but I think the Rebel is just better in the corners than I am. And my acceleration advantage there is nowhere near enough. Uh, if we're going to 
if we were going to be beating the rebel, we'd have to be absolutely monstering it in that sort of section, and we just don't. But we shall see what we can do, basically. Uh, again, don't hit the rocks there. Uh, yeah, it's the traction. The, the difference is, is the rebel will have traction on me that I just don't. I just cannot put my power down in some of these sections the same way that the AMC can. However, can we close? This is where we need to... If we're not closing on it here, it's game over for us. If we can close on it towards uh, turn three, then that would be good. Ah, it's not going to be enough. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. We might be able to catch the, uh, the Buick, the GNX. So second place might be on the cards, especially... I mean, if they fight each other a lot... Could also help me if the Buick. The Buick does look like it's slightly faster than the Rebel in a straight line, so that could be a long-running battle between those two. And if they fight each other, they're losing lap speed. I could potentially profit from that. Both me and the uh, AMC tap the wall uh, into the twisty hotel section. Now the Rebel hit the stones and lost a bunch of speed. Uh, easy mistake to make through there. Uh, the Buick is really struggling down the hill. The Rebel actually hit the wall. Uh, I don't know if the Rebel hit the wall uh, or whether it actually got stuck up behind the Buick uh, in that corner. Uh, we are out of the final turn. And this is where... So, yeah, this is where the Buick then frustrates both of us because it outruns us. It doesn't actually outrun me here. No, we've got a really good run as well. Uh, the Rebel is to the inside. If I'm going to have any chance of winning, I've got to go here as well. And... We have the acceleration on the rebels. This is what I was saying. This sort of band uh, in the power, we are slightly better than the rebel. Buick is slightly better than us through here. Oh, don't hit the wall. Don't hit the wall. Whatever you do. Uh, on the brakes, we dive. We can definitely... I think we can get turned in better than the rebel, but I can't get my power down. That's where I'm really struggling. So we have got the turning grip we beat the Rebel on, but I lose out on power delivery. This could be very close, though. We've still got a couple of laps to look for a way past here. Uh, don't. Oh, come on, behave now, Bentley. We are the, the Range Rover's actually not far off, so that's making all of its lap time up in about two corners around here, but it's making a very big chunk of lap time in those two corners. What can we do here against the Rebel? It's going to run wide and brush the wall. It's going to be a little bit slow through all of that. We are going to chase it down as best as we can. And if I can put it under pressure into the hotel complex, we might be able to pass on the, first, on the way in. We might be able to pass this lap around. It's made a little mistake. Although, oh, I could not get my car. Oh, I went past there because we bumped it. I was actually trying to get to the inside, but I couldn't get the car out of the... Uh, I couldn't get my car across in time before the Rebel got on the brakes. Uh, so, yeah, we ended up just bumping it into the braking zone. Uh, and, of course, now we've lost a bit of gap to the Buick. We've got to be careful because the GNX is right there, although that struggles in some of these corners as well. One more time around. Come on, Bentley. Find some traction. The Land Rover's there, but it's kind of just got the watching brief at the moment. It's going to be that hotel complex. If the Rebel is clean through this corner, I think it will be out of range, but it isn't. It's slow. It's really slow through there. We were very quick as well. We are a little bit out of shape, though, through this next section. The car is... My car is so on edge. It slides about so much through here. What will the Rebel be like? Because this is the bit where it really matters. This is where the Rebel's really struggling, although it's very good this time around. I'm not going to be close enough to go for a big dive, and I think the Rebel's got it. The Buick's having a look, but it won't find much luck there. I can't put the power down well enough. Uh, we will head towards the final corner. You can see the traction difference between me and the AMC. I just can't do it. Yeah, we were not close enough. At the end of all of that, a wonderful race. We had our chance, and we just made a little mistake. We couldn't pull our car far enough to the right to get alongside. Great race. We all crossed the line in second. That was what that was what the Bentley was built for, and it definitely does work. Not easy. Really not easy to drive. Not easy to get the hang of. When you do get it working, it's quick. Um, 
But yeah, <laughs> great fun. Really, really enjoyed that race. Slightly disappointed we couldn't quite do it because um, we were literally right positioned so close to perfectly, but not quite. But that's my sport for you. Ah, oh, I'll take a second. The Bentley has come good. We hit I mean, basically to pain for <laughs> this next one. <laughs> Caldera on a scramble. Oh, and I suspect it might be another sixth-ish. Oh, I can't speak. Sixth-ish place finish. Really, uh, we've got Range Rover is probably going to win. The Bel Air is going to be quick. The Vandura is going to be better here because this is full dirt. Uh, hello, Eve. If you come to be distracted. I mean, you can distract in this one, because we're not going to be going very quickly. We're going to be sitting and spinning our wheels for about 30 seconds before much happens off of the line. And, of course, things like the, the Rebel and potentially even the Buick are just going to have much bigger tyres than me. Uh, so they will have traction where I do not. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm going... I might have... The one thing I do have going for me is we do have excellent turning. As we saw against the Rebel there, actually, uh, the front end of my vehicle actually turns in very, very well. Probably the back end doesn't do what it's supposed to, but the front end is great. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and that should, in theory, translate to the dirt, because like, the compound of tyre between, although I get... Mm, the compound of tyre between me and, and the Rebel is probably similar. Um... And yeah, my vehicle is turning in that much better. That might translate into the dirt. Problem is... That's the only phase of the corner that we're half competent on. Uh, they are just much better at putting the power down, and that's going to be exacerbated, exacerbated, can't speak, on dirt. Uh, that, that difference in traction is going to be way, way worse uh, on the dirt than it was on the tarmac. But there we go. Uh, we are currently sat in sixth. The Rebel is having some understeer issues in towards the wall. Uh, we are nicely... I mean, we're nicely through turn one. Nothing, no, no problem. Well, I've seen the problems. We're not fast through it, but we're controllable enough uh, through it all. Can I find a way past GNX? And if I am going to, where am I going to? I mean, I know where it is actually. It's going to be in the really twisty stuff. Because uh, again, we can get that change. Of, we, well, we can get the front end to change direction. The back sometimes disagrees uh, with it. The Toro, that's going to go past. I, there's, I didn't realise it was there, and even if I did. I think there is about zero I can do about that one, because that will have better turning than I do, because that has humongous front tyres. Sadly, I wanted to try and follow it through, but the gap did not exist for long enough, and I couldn't aim my car into the position where it would have needed to have been. So, yeah, the Oldsmobile is clear. Uh, we are going to try our best to chase down the Buick. The Javelin is a little bit further back. Uh, it's not quite putting us under pressure at the moment, which is good. Oh, the Buick is up high. We're up quite wide as well. Come on, Bentley. Oh, your lack of traction is just so bad. <laughs> oh, there's only so much that I can really do. So yeah, we, we are terrible climbing the hill. Yeah, to be expected, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, we are terrible, terrible climbing the hill. We then reel it back in through this section. we just got to be close enough. Because even, the thing is, even if we are close enough to have a dive at turn one, which has looked possible, we're just going to immediately be repassed, I think, on the exit. Now, we might be able to make this one stick around. Oh, we didn't even need to go around the outside. Uh, the Buick was out of position and uh, could not quite hold on to that. I have now got to try and get the power down coming up this hill. I'm trying leaving it in Ford, seeing if that helps me. I don't really know if it has, to be honest with you. Uh, okay, I've got to pull a big gap in turn one here to not get past up the hill. I mean, the only good, the good news for me is even if we get past up the hill, I can A, force the Buick to go to the outside, and when we passed it once in the twisty section, in theory we could pass it again. Uh, we are still ahead on a very tight line on the way in. That's not ideal, but we can kind of cover any attempts at the moment. Oh, still struggling for grip. Uh, the Buick is right there, but now we're coming in towards my favourite section of this track, certainly with the Bentley anyway. Uh, we should be able to build a gap through here, and indeed we can. Yeah, it's just there. <laughs> the turn it is just too good in the Bentley, which is nice, nice to have. And now we just have a run to the line. Get the car through here. Oh, it's having a look. It's had a really good try at the end. Couldn't quite do it. I just can't put any power down. 
Oh, it was a great battle for sixth. It was a great battle for sixth. Yeah, not a trap that I, my car works out. Fair enough. Um, a great, great fun battle for sixth. The javelin was right there. The javelin had some pace actually. Uh, <laughs> the javelin was right in that one as well. I will, I will take it. But victory goes the way of the Range Rover. We head to the lookout circuit for our final race, and that is the position on the grid that I wanted to be. Uh, this does represent a half-decent chance for the Bentley. We know it's got good turning in comparison to the Rebel, so it'll be good actually through the never-ending turn two, three, four, five. That section it should be quite good. We'll struggle with oversteer, but we should be quite good there. There's some longer straights for the power, the straight line speed advantage for this car to kick in. There's not too many really low speed acceleration zones. That's where we suck, basically. Um, the problem is, I've got to get the car off the line. We're always going to lose out to some stuff. It's how much do we lose out and can we get back past it before the ghost mode comes to an end. We're back past the transit now. I'm not too worried about the Mustang or the Corvette. Neither of them have the grip to live with us. I think the Corvette's on standard tyres. Uh, it's got straight line speed, but does not have anywhere near enough grip. So we are to the lead of the race. Now, I mean, we are similar to the Rebel in the way we generate lap speed. Both of us are very different to the Range Rover. Now, the Range Rover might have a very frustrating time, because me, the Rebel, maybe even the GNX to a degree, can potentially defend from the Range Rover, because we can out-accelerate it every straight and then make it very awkward coming into every corner. Uh, now, this section here is a curious one for the, uh, for the AMC, because I have the turning grip. This is the one acceleration zone where I might struggle against the Rebel. Uh, through here, but then we've also got this next corner where the Rebel might struggle to get turned in. Uh, we should both blast away from that Range Rover. I'm really hoping I'm better through this coming corner. I don't know, no idea how much speed I can get away with uh, taking through here. Uh, quite a lot, but I don't know if anybody's going to really know what they can and can't get away with. That's too much. That is way too much. That's the last thing I needed to do. Oh, sorry, steel guns. I am very grip limited through all of that. My car just gets very floaty. <laughs> it just slides everywhere. Yeah, that was a bit too brave from us. We're fast, but as soon as the back end lets go, there's no, there's no easy way to recover it, basically. And uh, now you will see us turn. Again, you can see us turning underneath the rebel here. We might be able to have a look into this final corner. The Rebel just cannot get the front end to turn in. I don't want to really go on the dirt, though, but the Rebel will put its power down. The Rebel accelerates away, understeers a bit through here, but then we oversteer. Range Rover's there, but not close enough. We'll blast off towards this first corner. Now, if I can get this first corner right and not oversteer myself into a wall... You can see how much the Rebel's struggling through here. Oh, yeah, don't uh, don't get too brave through this part. We need to be a little bit brave. We're going to pass the AMC. We're going to have to be brave. That time there was much better from me. We are right on the boot of that machine ahead. The van, uh, the, van the, the Range Rover's gone. The Range Rover cannot match our straight line speed here, but it will then gain all the time it's lost early on, it will now gain into this section. And all the time I've gained, I lose on the acceleration out of this uh, kind of final corner part. Can I... I see, I want to fire it up the inside here. I want to fire it up the inside... Oh, the Toronado's going to get all of us here, actually. Um, yeah, what I want to do is I want to fire it up the inside of the AMC, and essentially stop it from being able to put its power down out of that corner, but I have to be close enough. And with the Oldsmobile and with the Rangey closer, that might scupper any plans I have of being able to make that work. Uh, so they're going to carry way more speed through here than I am. And is it going to cause us grief? Not quite. Not quite yet. I mean, it'll cause us grief into the twisty sections. What we might have to do here, that's what we might have to do, I'm going to have to defend like crazy if the AMC I'd rather the AMC win than the Oldsmobile 
Because <laughs> it's a lot more like me. Uh, oh. Well, never mind. <laughs> uh, and I was trying to get back across to the inside, but he's just got so much more grip than I have that uh, there's only so much that we can really do. Uh, I mean, that is a line for a Range Rover. I guess it is a Range Rover. At the end of the day, it is a, it is a Range Rover. It can do that sort of stuff. We will outrun it down towards the first corner. Right, so we're cheering on the Rebel here to go and take victory while we're trying to cling on to a podium spot. I think the Range Rover will struggle to pass me because as good as it can be in the corners, it's really slow down the straights. Um, I'm hoping we can be far enough away. It's going to have a look there. It's actually closer than I wanted it to be through that first section. We will not need to do that. That's bad. We, again, we're well out of range. It's not going to be able to dive here. Uh, what we will try and do... I mean, if we can part, if we can be neat through here, which we are, and then we're going to have to park it on the inside in this final corner. The AMC is defending. Is the Range Rover going to have enough grip? Well, yeah, we got a bit squeezed onto the dirt through there. Uh... Yeah, we just always get a struggle on traction. We will pull away from the Bel Air. We fought as hard as we could, but at the end of the day, it's just not quite. Someone missed a checkpoint. I don't know who missed a checkpoint, but someone missed a checkpoint at the end there. Ah, oh, it was. Wait. Uh, who was it? The, oh, the, the course. The, the, the Oldsmobile missed a checkpoint at the death. That's unfortunate. We still get a podium! I guess the Oldsmobile sent it trying to uh, to get the lead, which, uh, you know, sometimes you got to try. Sometimes you got to try. Um, yeah, we get a podium. I mean, we fought as much as we could there. The Bentley is fun. It's fun. It's quirky. It's different. It's not quite good enough. It has got some strengths. It's, it's, it's acceleration is good in places the the big the biggest problem is that i can't put the power down well enough and that means i can't i struggle to use my acceleration properly uh, but there we go yeah I, i'm still pleased i went for it it was a, a a fun different vehicle to uh to try that is for sure and a sketchy thing to drive but there we go that is going to be it for this uh for this video. If you'd like to take part in the next one of these, you can sign up via our Discord. There'll be a link in the description. I find the versus community sign up section, and you can register to take part in there. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.